Well hello everyone! Today we're gonna take another look at RimWorld and we're gonna do a little startup guide for refrigerators and freezers in the game. This guide is mostly for new players so if you are an old player you might already know what I'm gonna say. So we start off by doing some early game stuff and by all means this is not really a refrigerator more than a make your food safer option. You should only do this if you have problem with food poisoning and stuff like that. It will not uh, help you store your food like a refrigerator or a freezer unless you actually play on an extremely hot map. So the materials you're gonna use is hay and wood. And if you don't know how to get hay, you actually grow it yourself in the growing zones quite easy. It takes a bit of time but it's worth it in a while if you do have food poisoning problems. So we start out by building some wooden walls because you don't have stone cutting. If you do have stone cutting while you're doing this it will be better since stone don't catch fire and will keep your food a bit safer. But since we use hay flooring it doesn't really matter that much because hay is really really flammable about 150% flammability. So if a fire starts you will lose your food anyway. So why do we even bother doing this when it's so much of a fire hazard? Well you see straw flooring only takes up 50% of the filth compared to normal flooring which makes it really really easy to keep clean. So when you use that in a space where you keep your food and do your cooking the filth will not get into the food and you won't get the filth into your colonists, which will decrease the food poisoning. But Drago, I don't have problem with food poisoning, why would I bother doing any of this? Well, like I said in the beginning, you should only do this if you have problem with food poisoning, because this doesn't, like I said, store your food in the way like a refrigerator or a freezer. Unless it's a hot map, because on a hot map things deteriorate a lot faster and will rot them more faster. So what we do is that we keep it inside which slows down the rotting and also puts down a passive cooler which keeps the room temperature at around 17 celsius. Which makes the food rotten slower but not slow. So depending on what food you keep, you can earn about an extra day or two. Now let's move on to freezers. Freezers, as you may or may not know, is the best way to store your food in this game. And around mid-game you wanna build it using stone walls and we keep that straw mat because well, food poisoning is still a thing in this game, and it's a really annoying moment. So if you don't have strong stomach yin, if you have the expansion, well, keep the mats. And normally I keep my coolers at minus 9 celsius, because that is easy to counter with light clothing, so you don't get any frostbites or shiverings and stuff like that. Now when you have made your first freezer you might want to add a kitchen to it. This will uh, make it a bit harder to get in filth that will contaminate your food. If you use the same building it's not impossible because they do go from the outside to the freezer and the kitchen and that will bring filth but at least we do what we can to lower the chance of food poisoning. Now that we build our kitchen wall to wall with our freezer, we are gonna end up with a problem though. You see the heat from the kitchen space will intervene with the cold air from the freezer. You see when you open the door from the kitchen to the freezer, you will get in some air. And that air is hotter than the freezer air and that will increase the temperature in the freezer and we don't want that. How do we counter that? 
And the answer is really simple. We build an airlock. Now naturally, when you walk outside into the freezer, the air will also be hotter outside than in the freezer. How do we come to that? Well, we build an airlock. Now when you build an airlock in RimWorld, you wanna have at least two extra doors from the main door and at least four spaces between the doors so that the first door have a chance to close before you open the second door and then to the third door because you do want the first door to be completely sealed when you open the last door. So if you want to have an extra security you can actually have a four door system and that's probably the best way to do it. I did a three way system here just to show you. Now note that you do want to have that extra airlock from the kitchen to the freezer as well since you do want to keep your kitchen about 21 degrees celsius to have the best efficiency for your colonists. Now when some time have passed and you have a secure food supply for your colonist, you have a good kitchen and everything, well, it's one thing left to do, and that is to upgrade it. Now you have probably done a lot of research and also have a lot of resources. Let's remove that flammable flooring. Because even though the straw flooring does not take up a lot of filth, it still is a lot flammable. And you don't want that. You want to keep your food secure. Because if you are unlucky and during a raid they will get invaders going in and maybe, well, destroying your cooler which make it start burning. That will spread to your food and that floor will spread it fast. So if you do have the resources, remove all the straw and replace it with stone or even better, sterile tiles. Now sterile tiles are silly expensive when they use up both silver and iron, but they are easy to clean and of course the most important thing, not flammable. But to answer the question everyone asks themselves, will sterile tiles help with food poisoning? And the answer is... Unfortunately, no. But since they are faster to clean, your colonist can clean more dirt before they get tired or bored and do something else, which means the kitchen will be easier to keep clean, which in a way helps against food poisoning. Now my last tip for this video will be always keep at least two coolers connected to your freezer. That way you cool the freezer more efficiently and faster. And it's just another counter measurement to help you counteract accidental spoiling from when you have a lot of movement in and out of your freezer. And with that I want to say thank you for watching. If you found this interesting give it a like. If you want more consider subscribing. Well until next time. Bye.